Sport fishing with surface lures and jigs is a popular and steadily growing sector worldwide. The basic principle behind sport fishing is releasing fish after they are caught. Fishers release fish for several different reasons. By principle, which means that all the fish they catch are systematically put back in the water because certain species are inedible, because the fisher has already caught enough fish to keep, or because regulations set limits on catches of fish sizes. This video explains the gear you will need and proper handling practices to ensure that the fish you catch have the best chances of survival when they are released. We will discover the knowledge and skills of Etienne, a new Caledonian fishing guide who cares about the survival of the fish and who is involved in promoting sustainable sport fishing. To release the fish under the best possible conditions, you need to have the right gear. Reinforced gloves to hold the line while the fish is being brought on board. Book grip, tight fish pliers, sharp elbow pliers to remove the hooks from the fish. A pistol grip hook remover. Long split ring pliers to remove the hook when the fish has fully swallowed the lure. You first need to remove the hooks from the lure so as to dehook the fish more easily. Gloves that must be wetted before you touch the fish. A small wet towel to cover the fish eyes to reduce light in your stress. A baler to pour water over the fish. A landing mat to lay the fish on. This can be made on non-abrasive waterproof cloth with foam inside to cushion the fish from bruising. Otherwise, you can also use a yoga or gym mat. A sling to bring larger fish on board when needed. If a big fish is photographed on board, a large wet towel should be placed on the fish lap to keep the fish from sliding off and to preserve the layer of mucus that covers and protects the fish. When you fish with jigs, you also need the following gear. A lead release weight attached to a line that has been marked every 5 meters. If you don't have a specially designed sinker for releasing deep sea fish, you can use one or more diving weights attached to a breakaway line, which is a thin nylon monofilament line with a small hook. The breakaway line is thin enough to snap when you tug hard on the line. In addition to this onboard equipment, we strongly recommend that you use barbless hooks on your lure so as to cause the least amount of injury to the fish and to make the hooking easier. If you don't have any barbless hooks, which are specially designed for sport fishing and are sometimes hard to find, you can always flatten the barbs with a set of pliers. Before each port fishing trip, it is important that you check to see if there is a marine protected area in the zone to be prospected, as fishing may be prohibited in such areas. Be careful, since some reserves exist on a seasonal basis. There are different handling techniques based on the size for releasing fish under the best possible conditions. Small fish can be taken by hand, dehooked and then directly released. Medium-sized fish can be de-hooked outside the boat using a pistol grip de or regular pliers. Large fish are often easier to handle and de -hook using a sling. The sling should be open in the water since its mesh allows water to flow through and makes handling easier. Once the fish arrives, Use the line to guide the fish into the sling. The fish can then be dehooked directly in the sling or brought on board if dehooking looks more difficult. The sling's handles allow two people to lift it when dealing with a very big fish. Lay the fish down and cover its eyes with the wet towel. 
We hook the fish. It is important to continue to pour water over the fish with a baler, especially around the mouth and gills. The whole time it is on board, put the sling back into the water and remove the towel. Then you just have to slide the fish out of the sling. When fishing with jigs, fish caught in deep water are often brought to the surface very quickly, thereby causing them to undergo rapid decompression, which causes organs that contain gas, like the swim bladder, to expand. For that reason, they cannot get back down into deep water by themselves, so they float at the surface, where they are easy prey for predators. This problem is the result of a physical law known as boyle marriott law, which tells us that the volume of gas decreases as the depth, and so the pressure increases. In the opposite direction, the volume increases the closer you get to the surface, since the pressure decreases. The product of volume and pressure is a constant, whatever the depth. For example, the volume of a balloon filled with 12 liters of air at the surface, where there is one bar of pressure, will be 6 liters at a depth of 10 meters, where the pressure is 2 bars. At 20 meters, where the pressure is 3 bars, that is to say triple that of the surface, the balloon volumes will be 4 liters. In the opposite direction, the volume of the swim bladder of a fish, pulled quickly from 20 meters to the surface, will triple by the time it reaches the surface. Here, the fish took the bait at a depth of 25 meters. The second fisher brings up his line so it doesn't get tangled with the other line. A brook herd has taken the lure in the middle of the pass. When you hook fish in shallow water and bring the fish up slowly, the swim bladder will not necessarily increase in volume. You can then use the regular release method. The line man wears gloves. When the fish arrives, he rolls in the line in a counterclockwise motion. The fish is laid on a landing mat. The hooked and water is poured over it. Finally, in order to avoid sharks or other predators that may have been attracted by the struggle, it is important to move the boat away from the catch areas before the fish is released. While the boat is underway, you need to continue to shield the fish from the sun and keep pouring water over it. It should then be released in a shallower area, where it will quickly be able to find a place to rest. The fish is released directly into the water from the landing mat. When deep bottom fishing, it is useful to know the depth at which the fish is caught, as this will help you release it under the proper pressure conditions. You should try to release your catch at a depth of at least two-thirds of the depth where it was caught. For example, a fish caught at 100 meters should be taken back down to the depth of at least 60 meters, and a fish caught at 60 meters should be released at 40 meters. The lineman has put his gloves properly, since a yellow-edged lion tail has taken the hook. You can see that his stomach has been pushed out by its swim bladder, which expanded while it was being brought up from deeper water. It is laid on a landing mat. Water is bailed over it, and its eyes are covered by a wet towel. The fish is dehooked using pliers. As mentioned before, it is moved from the area where it was caught, so as to avoid predators during release. While the boat is underway, the fish is covered by a landing mat. The person who is going to release it wets his gloves and put them on. After moving off to one side, they look for the right depth. During that time, water is poured over the fish. The depth under the boat is about two-thirds of the depth where the fish was caught. So, by taking it down using the lead release white, recompression will be enough to allow the fish to regain its balance. 
begin by sticking the hook of the release weight into the soft part of the fish lower jaw. Then remove the wet towel from the fish eyes. The fish is put into the water and the weight takes it down. They let the spool run out while keeping an eye on the death marks. The line from the spool must be taut so that the fish head really points down and the weight takes it to the bottom without the fish coming unhooked. When the release weight touches the bottom, they tug hard on the line to free the fish. They pull the weight back up and wait for a while to be sure that the fish does not pop up to the surface. If it does, they have to begin all over again by releasing the fish in deeper water. If you don't have a proper release weight, you can make one from a big piece of rebar or use the breakaway line technique that consists of tying a thin monofilament line with a small hook to one or more lead weights. Here, a small hook with a 12 or 15 pound trace is attached to the corner of the fish mouth and the fish is handled as described earlier. Once the weight gets to the bottom, all they have to do is to tug hard on the cord to break the line and free the fish. Sport fishing is a rapidly growing sector that offers a strong development potential for Pacific Islands. Given current and future declines in marine resources due to growing populations, overfishing and the impact of climate change, all sports fishers need to use proper catch handling practices as part of their efforts for the conservation of resources. This includes getting the right equipment so as to give the fish they release the best chances for survival. For all these reasons, the Pacific community and the southern province of New Caledonia are committed to promoting the development of sustainable sport fishing in the Pacific.